Hello, I'm FGX Toy Cat, and one of the weirdest things I miss about the console editions of Minecraft is the old tutorial worlds that used to come bundled with the game. I mean, when you see this, it's hard not to be nostalgic if you ever played any console edition, but the thing about the tutorial worlds you might not know is they used to update it every single time they changed the game. This was a way for them to teach you about all the new features in that update, but also to entirely redesign and improve the world as a whole. So in today's video, I'm going to go through the 10 separate iterations that did exist of the tutorial world, and we're going to be using this as an opportunity to rank them all and indeed to find the very best tutorial world from Minecraft console. So I hope you'll enjoy. Let's get straight into it with the title update one tutorial world. The year is 2012. You load up your Minecraft console for the first time and you're trying to understand how furnaces or even just jumping, breaking blocks, placing blocks. You want to know how all of that works. So you load up the Minecraft TU1 tutorial and my god does this take me back. Even, I mean, the Minecraft sign is the clear uh, point of nostalgia. You look at that and you immediately immediately feel something, right? But even if you just look at this little cave right here, even if you look at this uh, little village over here, you start to feel a lot of things because this village, fun fact, was made before villages existed in Minecraft console. And so as a result, 4J just kind of designed their own little village and I still really like it to this day. This is a village design that never made it into any other version of Minecraft. And indeed, when villages were actually added to the base game outside the tutorial, they didn't stick with them being like this. But I really like this village design for being partially unique. I mean, Look at the you know the houses compared to how they are now. They were a step ahead of the game by adding beds to villages, something Minecraft, Java, and Bedrock only did in, what, 2019? But if you look around, every single house in this village contains a bed, because where else would the villagers, invisible and non-existent during TU1 as they were, where else would they sleep? It's a small little thing, but it's nice. They have a library here that's designed to teach you about books maybe, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but it has not only some furniture, but also a bed. I really do think that like a, a lot of things um, you know, were, were really done ahead of the curve by 4J, and clearly this tutorial world shows that their village design was a step up ahead, and also they had this lovely little castle over here. It was designed to help teach you about minecarts, because you had to you know, I'm gonna have to kill the sheep just to get him out of the minecart. It was designed to teach how minecarts work, so you press the button, and oh, now we're going for a tunnel. Ooh, minecarts, they're cool, they're spooky, they, they take your places. Fun fact, faster than before. And then you see this castle, which is the final major feature of this tutorial world. As you can see, it's a nice little castle. Maybe it's here to inspire you about what you can build. Maybe it's here just to uh, teach you about things that you can do underground, because mining is a key part of Minecraft. Oh, so are boats. But obviously the boats didn't look like this. Man, such a blast from the past. A few little things that you might not have known about about this world, I can tell you because I've spent way too many hours like exploring around this thing, uh, just kind of seeing what's here. You can see how just over here, there is this weird little tower using Neverac. It's kind of like a lighthouse, but it uses Neverac. Man, the, the 2012 world of console building was very different to the 2021, huh? <laughs> this is a real structure they put in their showcase tutorial world. And this is the second village, which is behind the spawn. This one had no tutorial mechanics. It was just here uh, with some beds, with some pretty nice designs, which I think, again, would almost just about hold up to 2019 standards and was so far above the 2012 standards. Honestly, it was kind of disappointing when regular villages came out compared to this. I mean, where are the barns? The barns didn't exist because... Uh, actually, you know, this barn looks better than a 20... Uh, you know, 20... Uh, you know, village and pillage barn. I would argue that Minecraft's 2012 just throw some blocks down uh, village design was better than anything else. Another thing that I always thought was at least mildly inspiring was this little tutorial area that you had to start in so you could do the basics of moving and placing. Um, it had this lovely little, uh, you know, like, a, like, I guess, river over here that they destroyed, but as part of that destruction of a river and making it go underground, they also made this lovely, like, off spill off it. I don't know why, but I always love this. It's, it's dumb, it doesn't look good, but I, I've been inspired many times by things like this. And yeah, this is the TU1 tutorial world, but it wasn't the only tutorial world, although I'm gonna give this one a solid six out of 10. It's got all the nostalgia points going, but also it is kind of lacking features compared to other ones. It's just got two villages, a castle, the, the jankiest lighthouse in the world, and really it's all being held up by this giant Minecraft logo. But you know it's not being held up by a Minecraft logo? I, I'm lying, it probably is held up by one. It's the title update free tutorial world. And honestly, if you take a peek at this, you might be remiss for thinking like, wait, isn't this the same world as before? It looks suspiciously similar, besides some lava there and 
maybe some other differences. Uh, this was after Title Update 3 came out, which was a pretty small update. Maybe one of the smallest major feature ones to ever come out. Honestly, all it ever really introduced was pistons, but pistons are such a game-changing mechanic by themselves that they pretty much made an update. They also introduced non-stacking fence, like, oh sorry, stacking fences. Before this, for whatever reason, fences didn't stack. I don't know why that was ever a thing in Minecraft, but yeah, pistons were introduced and there's a little tutorial area to teach you how to use pistons to make water flow happen or rather not happen. You can do some weird things like move a block back and forth. Don't you all enjoy this? I know I enjoy this. And uh, yeah, they give you some redstone to teach you how to play with these new features. Uh, we still have the same boat and fishing tutorial, if I'm not mistaken, from the first uh, thing. So if you want to uh, learn how to do that, you totally can. I wonder what this update block's doing here. But yeah, basically, uh, th this is the same tutorial world, except it was here to teach you about pistons. So uh, just to really qu quickly recap, everything else is exactly the same. We have over here a village which is untouched since the first time, but still better than 2020. So no no issues with late 2012 having uh, a village that looks like that. For whatever reason, the, the little... <laughs> the waterfall over here stayed. So did the lighthouse. I mean, the lighthouse was so good. How could they change it? I mean... Who would be able to do that? Not me, that's for sure. But the biggest change is what happened when you got in your minecart and you went down here. So again, realistically, if you were uh, someone who played the first tutorial world, you probably wouldn't check this out unless you were really curious about how pistons worked. But some people did that. And uh, here was a fun little uh, design trying to teach you about the power of pistons. Uh, because, you know, that water effect is pretty cool and maybe inspired some people. But I think this is something that can maybe inspire people a lot more. So uh, the idea was have a cobblestone generator, use pistons to push those cobblestone stone blocks as indeed you can see is happening right here and then use those cobblestone blocks to be fired over to these and as you can see every single time the cobblestone is going to be launched in this direction but then all of a sudden there is a way to cross the lava lake and it shows that just a simple bit of redstone really I mean it's actually like what is this like four or five repeaters it uses six pistons and a cobblestone generator, but even just those things and five obsidian is enough to make a self-generating bridge, which is it's pretty cool to say the least, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, so it's just a way to teach you about uh, pistons in the same cool way. Everything else was roughly the same. You can see there's this big uh, library room over here. I, I don't know why it exists. It's got the same boat thing, but there's one other key change they made in this update, and that is one of my favorite little secrets, because this is when they started to realize the tutorial world is something people are going to play every update, so that we don't get them bored. What if we put some secrets in there? So what they did is they widened the Minecraft logo just a little bit, in a way that most people wouldn't pay attention to, and they meant that they, they could put some pistons in here to make this a secret little nether portal. That's right, you could secretly go to the Never in this update. Obviously, the Never existed before this, but still, it was a cool way for them to hint that like, oh, you found a secret. Good job on finding that. And it's one of the very first secrets they ever put into a world. Also, here's a pig that you could ride around if you wanted to, but that's a whole, that's a story for another time, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the first uh, little secret they added. And that's why I have to give this world a seven out of 10. It takes those decent basics, and then it decides, oh, we can teach people about the new things as well as the old things, and also we can add a secret, and just this one secret made it like uh, interesting to explore the entire world, um, and really generated a unique console edition exclusive off the tutorial world, something that is the reason this whole video even exists, because each of the worlds are legendary in their own little fun way, right? And speaking of things that are interesting and fun, let's move in to the next world, so when Title Update 5 came around, they decided they would keep the same basics. It's the Minecraft logo. It's this wooden house that looks exactly the same. And in fact, this whole spawn area stayed the same as the previous update, which maybe led some people to think like, oh, it's going to be the same thing. But this was after a major update to how hunger, sprint mechanics, etc., like that, uh, all of those things worked. And so as a result, they changed the world pretty much entirely. The world that we recognize with, with its villages from before had changed because now villages naturally generated inside Minecraft. So here is a naturally spawning village. Wow. Well, Sure is nice, right? It's got a blacksmith, it's got a church, it's got, it's got all the new village buildings. Fun fact, it didn't have any villages because even though 1.8 brought villages, they didn't bring villagers, which I still find funny. And then as well as that, we've also got the first thing that the game takes you to, which you have to take a minecart to, really emphasizing the minecart as a, uh, you know, a feature right here, which is this little stone village. This is something that a lot of people find iconic. Personally, I never like love this the same way a lot of people do, but it's worth mentioning. It has a cult status. When people see this, they just feel uh, like this nostalgia for this weird stone bricky village, um, which, uh, you know, looking back is kind of a way to encourage you to be like, yeah, 
you can build your own village houses as well. I mean, sure, the game will naturally generate with some, but wouldn't it be nice if you made your own with trading stools and... My god, everything they did for the... <laughs> everything 4J did in their villages was just, uh, you know, like a preview into the future. Like, these are now default Minecraft village features. Again, a full seven years later in the village and village update. Also, there's a fenced off area with a sign here. I'd, I'll never know what the sign says though. And uh, so yeah, you can see it's a really nice uh, little village designed to teach you about various features uh, once more. Again though, each of these village houses have beds in. This one even has two beds in. Uh, this one has a furnace in if you want to learn about that. It was a fun little place, a fun little way to learn. But also, uh, you could head in other directions from spawn and find other things. So for instance, here's another village. This one has a flag in it, so I guess it's like here to teach you that villages can generate in deserts as well. And you can generate them differently and oh, and there's a chest to reward you with, by the way, notice what's in here, C418 far. So back in the console edition days, every uh, challenge, every uh, you know, tutorial after this, they realized that people are coming back anyway. Why not add a little bit of a fun secret? And the fun secret was there are music discs. You had to collect them all and they were hidden all across the world. So this one signified with a flag. This one's hidden inside the Minecraft logo of the A. So as you can see, there's full diamond armor as well as Strad. This one was hidden behind some glass right at the spawn area, which I think is sneaky. So that's cat. And then this same sneakiness encouraged them to hide this right behind the spawn. As you can see, it's the same thing teaching you about pistons. It's the, the bridge, but this time just over a gap. And then if you go through here, you'll find yourself in this big fiery room. And in the fiery room, here is a never portal where, by the way, for the, oh, you meant to, there's definitely some redstone you meant to do. Maybe you pull some levers under here. Or maybe you get a maybe you get a chest for diamond shovel. But then also, this was the first time they actually incorporated the Never in their, into their tutorial worlds. Oh god, looking at old Never generation, like from the console days, it's just so weird and different compared to how it generates everywhere else. And seeing it with all this fog around, something just feels weird and off about this. I can't believe this dimension ever used to be exciting before the Never update. Like, what did you do here? You just you just came here and. That was it? Question mark? Like, <laughs> there were no blaze rods to be gotten. There was no wither skeletons to be killed. It's just, it's just fire and soul sand and gravel. What? I guess you could come here for zombie pigmen and for glowstone. People love glowstone. But otherwise, it was a near worthless dimension. But I always loved this tutorial world because it started that desire to hunt. That desire to look around the world and to see uh, you know, exactly what secrets were hiding around it. You weren't just learning about Minecraft and seeing about the new features. And even at some point, it stopped being about that majoritally. Instead, it started being, let's see what little goodies are hidden around here. Let's see what they've changed uh, since last time. And boy, did 4J start paying attention to that. So yeah, I'm going to give this tutorial world a nice solid 7 out of 10 again. I mean, I didn't love it. I mean, uh, uh, they didn't fully incorporate the Never. They just put it there and had... Uh, some new stuff, and they, they, I feel like, you know, the hiding was like, on the on the basic level, it was good enough. I feel like it was a great entry level into tutorials. Uh, it got you excited to maybe see some more, but boy, did they uh, show us what they could do the next time around. Because this was the TU9 tutorial world, and you're starting to really get used to this spawn area that has, you know, a few basic things here, teaching you about pistons and water flow and how to break and place blocks. But then when you left this starting area, you got given the first music disc to really encourage you uh, that you should do that. A jukebox as well, as well as a bow with flame on, which is interesting, teach you about those new enchantments that came in this update. Wow, you can set things on fire. And then they gave you this lovely starting house. This is the tutorial world that uh, I feel like I have the first like super fond uh, you know, memories to where I can remember the build specifically because I spent so long looking around trying to find all the discs. I was like, in this chest, no, in this chest, no, this is teaching you about potions. Um, there are a lot of cool things they did in this update to teach you about all sorts of weird, wacky things. Like, for instance, they taught you about melons and sugarcane, how they grew, but at the same time, they had some little sneaky things you could learn about with, uh, you know, perhaps pistons. Here is some lava. You will burn if you go in there, unless perhaps you look elsewhere in this house. You know, you go to the top floor, and what do you see when you're up there? Oh, you see, there's a lovely little lever. What happens if we pull the lever? It makes a note block sound play, and that lets us know that... Actually, wait, I think we need a second lever. It's probably in the other room, right? There's, there's probably another lever around here somewhere. By the way, while you're looking for the lever, you find out about how enchanting works, which is great. While you're looking for the lever, you find the second bedroom, which definitely has... Oh, it's actually got a, one of the discs in here, as well as a Smite 5 sword. Wow, really handy for killing mobs. 
Oh, there's a secret room over here that if you can break through, all of a sudden, there's a there's a never portal for you as well. I think that's incredible. I think that's a really cool uh, little find. It wasn't what I was going for with that. I guess instead this lava's here to teach you about fire resistance and the lever was there to activate the secret never portal. Again, a little bit of a homage right there. So what was behind the lava? Oh, and there's another uh, disc for you. So yeah, you found music discs by kind of learning about the world. Um, but if you didn't know about the world, you'd still pick the things up because this world was really cool in my opinion. There were all sorts of weird structures like desert temples, but before desert temples existed, again, they did a pretty good job of this in my opinion. I think this is much more enticing than a, a jungle temple is and arguably more enticing than a desert temple because it teaches you about traps. Oh, no, it gives you a sword with looting free on it, which is nice. And also the mole disc. Yeah, this is a really cool little structure actually. I would have enjoyed seeing what uh, 4J Studios could have done if they made their own structures, because this is just a throwaway structure in a tutorial world. But you can see how like, oh, teaching me about railways and levers and pistons and the brand new farming mechanics, because pumpkins and melons were just added. And also breeding, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the, the mobs aren't there for some reason, but it taught you how to breed various mobs, taught you how to farm various things. I, I, I love this uh, tutorial world. It was even the first tutorial world to have one of these mysterious, just missing desert wells, which are or like rather just village wells. They seem to be, it's the start of a village, but the rest of the village didn't generate. I don't know why these things were so prevalent, but they only seem to exist in the console edition. And uh, yeah, you can see how this whole tutorial world otherwise is actually pretty empty. I don't know where they hid the other eight discs. Maybe in the nether? Question mark. Or maybe in this lovely little house that exists in the swamp. Again, doesn't this look like a natural structure, just a little single house in the swamp uh, with a secret music disc behind the chimney, as well as if we go into the house itself, a furnace, a bed. Wow, you're not, again, wouldn't, wouldn't you love to see a villager house that was this fleshed out? I bet you would. Really, mostly that is about it. I think there's also another village over here, but otherwise it's just a huge swamp, which maybe was exciting at the time because it was new. Actually, this is a pretty lame tutorial world. I guess I built it up in my head because of the nostalgia, but like, what, what are you meant to do around here? Although, you know, there are little easter eggs and findings we go around, like this little boat in a tree. And uh, yeah, we're slowly finding all the, uh, the the discs, which is a nice little find. However, as far as tutorial worlds go, this is definitely one of the weaker ones. It's cool because it gave you a little house mansion. It's cool because it gave you more tutorial than before. But as far as the secrets and the fun, it almost feels like a step backwards. So, you know, as a result, we have to downgrade it to a six and a half out of ten. But you know what can't be a six and a half out of ten? This is the TU11 tutorial world. And you might be thinking, wow, Minecraft just added the Ender Dragon. Wow, there's a there's a completeness to the game now. It is a finished product, so it's gonna be exciting to look around and see exactly how it looks. And then you realize, oh, actually, it's the same. I mean, sure, there's a chest at the top of the, top of the house now. That's one way to hide a new disc. Some other things change, like, oh, Look, the, the breeding now has animals. That's that's exciting. But for the most part, this was the same tutorial world with the minor additions. It does have to be mentioned that, you know, they were technically some additions. So behind the spawn area, you could see there was this one little castle that they added, which is nice, I guess. Why did they add this castle? What's the benefit of the castle? Is it just a way to get another disc? I guess so, as well as an unbreaking iron pickaxe. What else was there to find that was new in this world? As, as best I can tell, not not too much actually. Besides these item frames you're seeing now, teaching you about what each room is here for, as well as removing the secret lever, which I always enjoyed. Actually wait, the secret lever exists, it's just the secret lever is now combined with a painting. Huh. So, secret lever makes the noise, and then as you can see, you can walk through here. Ah, it opens a door, it doesn't move a block. That's, see again, this was like one of the, a lot of people's first introductions to this. I loved the idea of the door behind the painting, like the secret hidden door. I still want to use that to this day. But um, also, uh, maybe the nether portal, because it's already filled in, will take you to a more exciting nether. I mean, you can't deny this is different, right? This is in fact a very different nether than it was before. But again, has the same problem of being dull and uninteresting. But you know, we can't blame that on the tutorial world. But we can blame just, what is, what is the point of this place? Oh, also it seems as though the dispenser will no longer give me a sword. It gives me paper that says, thanks for playing. That's a classy little touch, actually. I mean, I'd rather have the sword. But still, you know what? Thanks for playing. They renamed something. But yeah, this tutorial world was slightly better. They had never access granted. They had another little structure, kind of reminiscent of that old uh, castle back in the day. Oh, and it's also worth mentioning that they have a lava pool at the surface in this swamp now. 
I really like how that looks. Also, as you can see right here, there is this hidden underwater thing. Maybe to inspire people to build underwater, because you could do that. You get a lovely shovel with efficiency on in exchange. Also, um, because this was an update that moved around some biomes, you can see how there's this huge new snowy biome that has a village at the very, very edge of the world. It seems like a weird thing to add, but I guess they did it anyway. Is there a, Are there discs in here, or is this just a thing? Huh, it's just a thing that exists, I guess. Man, all of this is weird. It's a snow-covered desert. I know this biome used to exist in Minecraft, but I can never fully believe it. And the fact that it's melting tells me that the game doesn't believe this fully either. <laughs> anyway, so this tutorial world, you know, it's got the same limitations, but it was slightly better, and that's why I'm going to give it a resounding 7 out of 10. But you know what's better than 7 out of 10? The TU14 tutorial world. And, you know, even looking around at spawn, you can see they've made some changes. Sure, the same thing where you've got to place and break a wooden plank is still here. Uh, but you can see immediately that instead of just a little tunnel you go through, now you go up these glorious stairs. Now you see this glorious giant logo in the sky. And you also see this entirely new area, which is designed to teach you about all sorts of new things. Anvils being one of them, uh, and you know, how you combine enchantments. The same, uh, you know, like potion grade stuff. Uh, you know, lots of it, complex Minecraft things were added at this time. And to make it easy for console players, they added all sorts of tutorials on things like ender chests, etc, etc. And as part of that, we have this kind of citadel style thing almost that you can see perched on this hill. Again, this is, uh, you know, this right here is perhaps the most iconic individual tutorial world. When people look at it, they go, yeah, this is what it's all about. Also, as you can see right up here, it has the same little secret. You can access the um, <laughs> inside the logo, which is a great thing to bring back. I always miss that. I was always like, why? Why don't we have that again? And all of a sudden it was back here with this giant citadel style area with, um, again, another thing that I feel like, you know, this is probably in the thumbnail for this video. This is just one of the most beautiful things. The creeper ship that they made right here to show you how to make ships. By the way, notice how suspiciously similar this looks to the, 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 the treasure ships that you find. The sunken ships, I guess they're called, at the bottom of the oceans in 2020. Just minus the flags. I'm just saying, uh, this came out in 2013, and uh, sunken ships came to Minecraft Bedrock and Java in 2018. Therefore, console edition, five years ahead of the curve once again. Although it's not a natural structure. But it's still cool to see, and it's still cool to get those same music discs. It's not in here. But, um, you know, that's that's fine enough because you still had access to this nice area. You still had access to that same music disc hunt. I remember this being the first tutorial world that I couldn't find all 12 music discs the first time I was playing. I, like, I really had to stretch myself to find things. I was like, okay, I'm going to look in the, the desert temple and we look over here. Um, also, just as a fun reminder of, like, uh, how old 2013 is, there is a desert temple now. This was the first update, if I'm not mistaken. But this was when desert temples used wool instead of terracotta. It looks so weird by comparison, but so much better, right? Like, if I'm ever making a desert temple for a map, I'm totally using wool again because... It just looks so much better. This update was also pretty notable for adding desert villagers to the game for the first time. They're made from sandstone instead of cobblestone. This one generated right at the edge of the world. Imagine this being an endless sea, but obviously when you convert a world to bedrock, it makes it infinite by default. So this is all new terrain right here. This is all uh, old TU13 uh, tutorial, or TU14, sorry, tutorial uh, terrain right here, including this Mushroom Island. And comparing the size of this to today's Mushroom Islands is kind of funny, but uh, oh, there's a little ladder made on here as well. This is a confusing world style. Um, I, I guess like it's probably like an already played in world file. That's why all the discs are missing and stuff. But it's just cool to see all of this stuff in the same world. This was an active way to just explore and see the new update for the first time. And just having this giant village on the cliff as the centerpiece was something that always lured people back in and something that inspired so many people that I know to be like, yeah, why don't I make something like this? Rather than just seeing the default structures of normal Minecraft, this was like a preloaded Here's what some professionals made in the game uh, kind of world, uh, showing off new biomes and new natural features. But alongside that, showing some really beautiful terraforming like they had to do to make this spawn area, showing some really beautiful bridging. I mean, this was simple enough to make, but I love these stairs to this day in that Minecraft logo, but also showing the complex things you can build if you're really willing to play around the terrain. And uh, yeah, till this to this day, I feel like the number of people this maps started to inspire and the you know the momentum that was growing behind tutorial worlds has only ever gone up since then this is an 8 out of 10 world it still has a lack of like 
you know, uh, it's it's not a day's worth of expiration. It's not even really more than a couple of hours of expiration. Also, they finally did themselves better. Uh, after the the disaster that you could maybe argue was the lighthouse from <laughs> TU1, uh, they decided to do it up. And so this is a new lighthouse. As you can see, it actually works. And actually, wait, you know, we need a better comparison. Look at it. it, it glows in the dark. The lighthouse officially worked. And if a lighthouse isn't a good enough reason to give this map 8 out of 10, I don't know what is. But there are better times coming up ahead. Also, wow, really, this this map looks great at night too. That is impressive. I would be lying if I said that TU19 didn't have a special place in my heart as one of the great updates for Minecraft console. Uh, you know, obviously the tutorial worlds is something I've mentioned a lot this video, but these tutorial worlds were introduced with updates, and this is when it seemed Minecraft Console Edition was getting updated at a serious pace that made it really competitive to Java. This was the first time it looked like we would actually catch up with the Java Edition, and so it was a really proud time to be a console player. It wasn't just the weird port, it was actually starting to be like, yeah, one of the places you can play. And this tutorial world was incredible in so many ways. It showed off the new beacons, the new horses, as well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, ocelots. And you know, it taught you how to breed all these new uh, mobs, or it taught you how to grow all these new foods. I mean, look how many we had at this point. TU1 had one food. Uh, you know, TU, I guess it'd be seven, had three foods. But now we had. Uh, you know, five of them in the game. So crops were increasing, mobs were increasing. We had cool effects like beacons and anvils alongside fireworks and potions and enchantments. And the, the, the number of things they had to teach you about in this world had almost never been higher. And then you can see there was this nice little castle on the hill. This is actually modeled, if I'm not mistaken, after a real castle in Edinburgh. So as you can see, it was a real way of adding their little Scottish charm to the game. Like, oh yeah, this is... Uh, you know, 4J is a, a real UK-based studio. They're in uh, somewhere in the Edinburgh area. I, I think that, that that's what they say roughly. But like, they're in that region of Scotland. Let's call it. And um, you know, this was their like first like, oh yeah, look at that. We made a cool real-life reenactment inside Minecraft, but also taught everyone about the world. Also made just an incredible thing that sticks in people's minds. Um, it is worth mentioning. This is one of the ones I remember fondly. I remember. Uh, like looking around this castle trying to find all the discs because they hid them pretty well, let me tell you. So this world was iconic enough by itself, but it seems a bit small, doesn't it? It seems like I'm going to be very mean to what's in here. But if you did go over these mountains right here, this was the first time they started including Easter eggs. So if you were doing the music disc hunt, as indeed I did, I remember I was like an hour into the first day just looking around the map being like, huh, this is cool. Look, it's got desert temples. It's got a new desert village with new blacksmiths featuring blacksmith chests now. That was always cool. I was looking around trying to find the music discs, when in the distance, I saw this. Yeah, this was pretty weird to me. I saw a boat and I was like, huh, there's a boat again. You know, Minecraft and their boats. They really love these. And to me, uh, this was something uh, which was like, huh, it's a big house. I I felt like I recognized it from somewhere. But I remember, I think it was my chat what was going crazy. They're like, did they really do that? And yeah, what they did, uh, if you recognize this, you recognize it. If you don't, that's okay too. Uh, because this is Stampy's uh, lovely world, if I'm not mistaken, his Let's Play series. Uh, they rebuilt block by block. They couldn't take his world file because this was in the Xbox 360 days. They built block by block his entire house inside the game. Uh, this was just after Stampy had become, uh, like he, 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 like previously it existed on, uh, in the Minecraft YouTube space, but he was just another guy. He had an explosion to be one of, I think the biggest, like not only like Minecraft YouTuber of the year, but also like the biggest child-friendly YouTuber in, in, you know, like in the world at that point, I'm pretty sure. It was a huge explosion in a year and was almost, he was almost the face of the game uh, as a whole. And as a result, they decided, you know, let's put his world in here. So if people want to play around in his world, they can do it. And I, again, the, the dedication it takes to build this rather than being like, yeah, we could, uh, we can, uh, you know, sneak this in there. We can, uh, work out a way to, no, they're just like, yeah, we'll just give it to players. If people want to experience his world, they can do that. It has all the blocks which also is a great way to teach people about things because every type of uh, you know resource existed. Uh, if you wanted to go into the Love Garden, you could see a bunch of YouTubers uh, from the time. They really were uh, like grateful people who played the game. I mean, where's the Toy Cat sign though, am I right? You know what, here's the Toy Cat sign. Am I, am I still upset I wasn't in here? Yes, I am. Am I putting my name in here now? Yes, I am also. Uh, there's a few, few awkward names you're gonna spot in here, uh, but also a few people that you'll still recognize in the space to this day. I mean, Big B, doesn't play Minecraft anymore, but he's, a, he's absolutely huge. 
Uh, same with uh, you know a couple of names you might spot over here. Echo is still a friend of mine. You see Blacky Chan. You see you see people that are still in the gaming space, which is kind of nutty. Also Hat Films, and it, it was it's just a really interesting uh, little little place to see. You can see the bedroom. I think this is is what most people recognize, right? Because it's at the start of every video. Here we go. I love Stampy Loser. Bed for for one because no one loves Stampy. Little little boots with a Christmas prezi from Santa. The fact that you could explore this for yourself was so many, uh, you can imagine how many children that hopped on this and it was their dream, but also how many other people were just like, this is cool. An uh, Easter egg of this size, just as an aside to the tutorial world, really set the scale for doing this bigger and better in future. And by the way, it's, it's worth mentioning, it's not the only thing they built in this world. It wasn't just a castle and the huge Easter egg. There's also not only that Mishma Island and the desert temples you're seeing and this little house in the cave. Uh, man, this. This house is something I remember way more than I should. Um, but there was this little house they put over here. With, there's no purpose to the house. It just has a chair made out of legs. <laughs> is this like a modern art museum or something? I, I don't know what's happening. But also, they had another castle over here. Again, this map was just filled with builds. Rather than just taking a 864 by 864 console world and being like, yeah, we're done. They just filled it to the brim with different ways to show you and teach you and I, 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 I love this map in a lot of ways because it just had so much going on for it. But then they had to top themselves for TU31. By the way, this is getting a 10 out of 10 for me for having such a huge elaborate Easter egg, for having a disc hunt that made you want to look out the map, and then also for doing a really good job at teaching people. To, today, I feel like this is the best way you can teach people how to play a game because there's an open fountain. You're like, what do I want to do? Do I want to learn about horses? Do I want to learn about the beacon over there that I see? Do I want to go and learn about, you know, books? or brewing, like everything was very straightforward and intuitive. And I think it was the best tutorial of being a tutorial that also happened to have a huge Easter egg and also happened to encourage you to find all of those music discs, which I loved. Also, ooh, there's a little secret entrance down here. What do we get if we go through here? Oh, and it goes lower. What's in the secret part of the secret basement? It looks a lot like a stronghold, right? Am I crazy for thinking that? Huh, it takes you out to another part of the house and on the inside. That's fun, isn't it? Speaking of fun, here is TU31, and I love that even after all this time, the, the spawn design has changed a few times, this is maybe the biggest part of it, but it's still got the same ugly house with the same missing blocks, and it's still got the same walkway you have to go through once you've learned about walking and menus and stuff like that. And yeah, here you can see the same roughly beautiful tutorial design, I'd say a little bit worse, because I mean it's like slightly more crowded with trees and stuff. It looks better, but it's less functional as the tutorial. It just, in my pure brain. But um, you can see how like, oh yeah, they, they, they were teaching you about all the new biomes that were added. And they did so with a really exciting world. This world is interesting for a lot of reasons. It's perhaps my favorite tutorial, but it's also interesting because it combined every single Minecraft biome into an 864 by 864 world. If that is incredibly impressive given just how many biomes there were. I mean, seriously, look at this. Like the size of a plains biome, this size. Then there is a forest, then there's a savanna, then there's a mesa, there's a birch forest, there is a desert over on the other side, if I'm not mistaken, with a desert temple. Um, there is, as you can see, a jungle over there. There's an extreme hills behind that. There's um, <laughs> all of these biomes. Uh, there's a mega tiger, a tiger, a snowy tiger, um, you know, like an oak forest. Like all of these biomes managed to fit into the same place in a way that was just pure and incredible. I, I you know, th to, to this day, I feel like this is one of those examples of just like an incredible thing that uh, you know, almost couldn't be topped. Like they they kept the Citadel style thing from before. They they te copied that from their previous world. So this same you know this reference to an old tutorial world, that little Easter egg almost, was found here in the corner. But then as well as that, we have the same Minecraft logo. But as well as that, there were just builds all over the entire world. They, I mean, like they didn't fill it entirely. I wouldn't say, but there's this huge cathedral thing over here inside the the Mega Tiger biome. There was a little like parkour course that you could do if you wanted to, and you'd be rewarded if so. Like, it was a little treetop climb, and it was actually a really fun treetop climb as well. Uh, they had minecarts going through here, as well as, by the way, as always, music disc hunt. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time I did a music disc. Oh, speedrun, oh, it's a cool um, roller coaster. Yeah, the 4G guys got really into designing roller coasters off this, so it seems as though uh, they just have a bunch of treetop roller coasters you can go through. Oh, and this one makes a bunch of jumps too. Oh, it doesn't work, because console edition minecarts went faster than Java and Bedrock do. Which is a feature I still think they should add. Just just, just throwing that one out there. But um, yeah, if you, you you can look and it's it's just an incredible 
little find, right? Just just this, every, even like the tiniest weirdest biomes have this. They had a hedge maze. I love hedge mazes. I'd never done one in real world, in the real life. But you better believe I found this and I was immediately excited to do it. What'd you get at the end? A music disc, you better believe it. They had this house over here. They have uh, clearly gone better at designing lighthouses since TU1. <laughs> Seriously, can we appreciate that TU1 lighthouse again? I mean, just, just look at that and now look at this. My God, the difference is light. It's, it's night and day, I would say. Um, and yeah, so it's an incredible lighthouse that worked automatically using daylight sensors. Had this little building next to it as well, the secret sink. Oh, it's it's a sink. It's not a secret uh, lever for anything. Little item frame on the wall. I I I thought this was the the tutorial world to end all tutorial worlds. I thought this couldn't be topped. I thought there was no way it was ever going to change or get better or anything like that. Because not only did they have all these things, they had a little part. Of, um, again, I think this is somewhere. Um, in East Lothian, like it's it's somewhere in the east of Scotland. Couldn't tell you the exact name, but it's like a recreation of an entire village uh, by the by the sea uh, with these beautiful houses. Like you can you can see the building's talents went up as Minecraft's complexity went up. As Minecraft console became more and more of a success, they clearly were investing not only in making the game better with updates, but also making the tutorial worlds a better, more interactive experience. Like even look at this. This is what is this? This is clearly some historical site that I don't know know how they're or what they're referencing. But just the inspiration a tutorial world could provide you alone was a lot. Being able to just look at the world and see all these things was great. And a reminder, this was free. Every update, they not only was the update free, but the tutorial world that came alongside it that taught you how to create toilets like this, those were free as well. And you know, it's 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 something I still can't get over. The the pure Call it generosity, call it skill, call it whatever you want to call it. But everything about this was just nice in my opinion. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give this that resounding 10 out of 10 again. It was great. I mean, could it could it get better? I think not. Just kidding. Here's the TU41 tutorial world. Somehow managing to, <laughs> like, you can really see the scale increase of the tutorial worlds from like, oh, it's a sign above an enclosed area to my god, this is a huge... Uh, you know, like area where you walk through a giant cave. There's an Elytra course, by the way. They they actually had like li little wards for flying through the various Elytra hoops. It has all the tutorial stuff that you expect. And then it had a music disc hunt that took you all across the world to all sorts of things. Not only did they have builds across the world, not only did they have weird Easter eggs and a little hump for you to find, but also they had a statue of every single mob in the game that you could find if you wanted to, which I thought was beautiful. So here's a statue of a pig. Over there, there's a statue of a skeleton. Every single mob was represented in this in this uh, tutorial world, which is impressive when you think about it, as well as all the pickaxes, I, I, I believe. Um, look at this mission island and how they customized it. Tell me that this isn't the best uh, you can do. Tell me, tell me you can do better than this, and I'll tell you that you're wrong and you're lying if you're uh, trying to convince me that's true. There is just so much going on here. Look at this little little cut through the mountain right here, which is clearly the way. If, no, there's no tutorial. It's just it's just a fun little thing. There's there's so much in this world to see and do. Because it was the first update we had the Elytra in Minecraft, they wanted to encourage you to fly around the world and just see the different things. And again, this entire world was absolutely free with its giant stone ghasts and everything. I personally think this is probably the most feature-rich tutorial world we had. I mean, it combined Amplified and all the biomes and a music disc hunt and um, all these statues that you can see, and the Minecraft logo, and a new Elytra flying around the whole thing. I mean, this was a content-rich world. Uh, there's just no way around it. But it started to make you question, like, what's the what's the direction for it all, you know? I, you know, like, the music disc hump was a really great thing. You could do every tutorial world. The tutorial was something that made sense. But after a while, it started to be like, so there's a lot of builds around here. But like, what is the reason to be flying around all of it? I mean, sure, there are some places you can climb up to get around and to fly again, but there are a lot of things that were just there as like builds, which I liked, but also didn't necessarily contribute to the cohesiveness of it all. There was no purpose explicitly behind it all. And also it made it very hard to actually do the music disc hunt. There was a basically near infinite world to explore with so many builds, and you never knew if there was a build was gonna give you a music disc or not. There was no real pattern as to why. And uh, it was great to look around. It's iconic, perhaps one of the most iconic worlds out there. But also, it felt cluttered. It felt like there was too much. Uh, there is definitely, 
Even though quantity seems objectively better than quality, the, the truth is, even a decent quality of quantity is worse than a high quantity, a high quality of low quantity. I don't know what I'm saying at this point anymore, but let's move into the final tutorial world and rate this one a 9 out of 10, because I actually don't, the, the, to, I thought this was the last tutorial world. I thought to, this was the last time they updated it and they just kind of made changes since then. But it turns out I was wrong. And the way to prove that is to load up Minecraft Xbox One Edition. This is a, this is a classic, am I right? Because this was the last ever Minecraft console edition tutorial world. This was the last time 4J ever made a tutorial and it was for title update 70, which came out at this time. So it's, it's sad to know there won't be another one of these because honestly this last one, it's cool. I mean, it's got the Minecraft logo. It's got, it's got the cool little obsidian portal thing up here. It's got, it's got the Easter eggs. It's got the music. It's kind of, it's got everything you expect from it still, right? I mean, it's, it was fun, it was different, it was a revolution. But part of it was sad because it was like, oh, yeah, this is the last ever tutorial world. Part of it was sad because it didn't, could never live up to the previous one. And uh, another part of it was sad because it was only for a few specific consoles. I think it might have been PlayStation 4 edition exclusive only, in fact. Um, you know, my history fails me after that time, honestly, because of the bedrock bedrockification that happened around the same time. But yeah, you can see how this was an update that added the aquatic features. So there's dolphins jumping over things, there's turtles. Like they put a lot of effort into this clearly, but it just isn't the same. I mean, it's it's a lot less cluttered. I have to give it that. I really enjoy that. It has the music just cunt. I enjoy that. It still does have tutorial features if you want them, but it was very focused underwater. And um, I remember it came out at a time where there was huge glitches about underwater. It has underwater generation that just doesn't exist in the game. It should, like waterfalls would be so cool but then they're not real. And I know it's sad in a way, isn't it? Like how, again, even in 20, 2019, there are features in this tutorial world that won't be in Minecraft for another decade, I imagine. They will be there eventually. It's a matter of time till we see waterfalls in Minecraft, right? It's a matter of time until we start to see some more of these things, those mushroom uh, structures, for example, or like random campfires to give you shelter when you come to land. I think a lot of the ideas from this will totally make it into the future. I think that's just goes without saying, right? Um, but, uh, and, and that is really what made the tutorial world such a revolutionary thing. Um, when people talk about accessibility in Minecraft, they usually mean like making it easier to fundamentally play the game, but tutorials made Minecraft accessible to the masses. You didn't need the wiki to lo know how to play Minecraft. Uh, there was instead a way to actually learn to play the game, something Bedrock just doesn't do as well. There is a text tutorial in the settings menu that no one is going to find, and that is the equivalent that Minecraft Bedrock has compared to this. To this day, I think the biggest mistake that Minecraft made when they basically took over 4J's product and started making Minecraft console is they didn't make a tutorial world for Bedrock and they didn't hire 4J to make their amazing, again, like you can clearly tell that on the art side, bare minimum, they're ahead of the curve. On the programming side, they got how to program for controllers and that's why it makes me a bit sad to see this. But to rate it objectively as a tutorial world, I'm gonna give this a solid eight out of 10. It's not the 10 out of 10s, it's not the nine out of 10s, but it was solid it did do the job, and maybe we rated all the tutorial worlds too high. You know, I, retroactively, that's probably true. But you know what else is probably true? It's probably true that I still miss this, and to, <laughs> to this day, I still think, you know, what if? What what could have been if there was a um, less bottom line focused Minecraft? A Minecraft that could appreciate that there needed to be a future of, you know, like a, a, a group of people who are excited to play your product rather than feeling forced then they could have done a great thing. If they'd have ported all the features, the amplified feature you see in this tutorial world that I'm playing with on Bedrock, by the way, you cannot get on Bedrock Worlds. You cannot get terrain that looks like this on Bedrock to this day. You need to get the tutorial world from your console world and port it over. The fact that there are so many features from this version still missing is a bit of a sadness to me every now and then. But um, it's something that I hope every year will be fixed. It's something that every year they get closer and they do a better job with. And that's what brings me hope for the future. That maybe all these pipe dreams, all these, uh, wait, all these pipe dreams, because it's a gas mouth. Oh, there's nothing behind that. But all these pipe dreams are not just uh, hopes and dreams. Or maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know for sure. We'll have to wait and see. But until then, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, you can like it and let me know you can share it if you really liked it, and you can subscribe if you're new around here to see more videos like this one. Man, I, I miss that. One of the things I always, uh, oh, it's a phantom, because Monster of the Night Sky. 
That's a cool one, actually. But yeah, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of cool things, and I hope this inspires you in the same way it inspires me every time I look at it. Because either way, I'm going to see you all next time. Goodbye. Forever.